In this video, we are tracking snow for tonight in the northeast. After that, the pattern kicks into overdrive as we take a look at the medium range forecast. The weather models are going nuts and we're gonna try to make sense of what's coming next. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I know it was rainy for a lot of us, but as we go into the future, we're gonna start talking a little bit more about snow and less about rain. And I'm getting ready to get into how that's gonna happen a little bit sooner than what you might think as we continue to talk about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And as you can see, this right here is our big cold front that has been sweeping across the country now for a couple days. It brought rain to a lot of us in the Midwest, into the Ohio Valley, and even into the South during Thanksgiving. I know it was really rainy where I live. And now all that's moving off to the east and to the northeast. And on the northern side of this storm, uh, we're gonna be talking about a decent amount of snow, okay? So let's go check that out. If I zoom into the northeast here, you can see that there's some pretty heavy rain moving through Albany all the way down through Long Island. Uh, and then, of course, moving north and east into the Massachusetts, Connecticut regions. And eventually, that'll get up into uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. And on the back side here, you can see that we do already have some of this stuff switching over to snow. That's going to continue to be the case, and it's going to expand as it heads east, okay? A lot of cold air is coming down from Canada behind this low-pressure system. And uh, we're going to see some snow tonight over here in the northeast. Additionally, south and east of the lakes here, uh, as that northwest flow kicks in, you guys are going to start seeing a lot more lake-enhanced and lake-effect snow. Uh, those machines are really going to be running tonight into tomorrow so let's let's look at all this stuff on the forecast models all right starting off here with the nam three kilometer version we're looking at the eastern side of the u.s because that's where all the action is this is the simulated radar what the radar could look like as we go into the future and if you want to keep up with the time it's always above my head so here we are at 10 a.m this morning around the time this video is going to come out you can see how we're going to have a little bit more snow mixing in here in northeastern pennsylvania and portions of upstate new york still got a warm bubble in front of it so we're not going to see any snow at 10 a.m. in Massachusetts or Connecticut or anywhere around there, but it is coming, okay? And then also you can see how our uh, lake effect snow bands are a little bit more pronounced. Um, should be noted also that a lot of moisture is going to get picked up off of Lake Michigan and then ram into the Appalachian Mountains over here in West Virginia. So we're going to see a lot of uh, snow showers and flurries here uh, in the Appalachian Mountains uh, from uh, the moisture over here in the lake so a lot of northwest flow happening on this side of the storm and that's really what's uh, causing everything today uh, as we progress everything a little bit into the future around 4 p.m today uh, check this out this is a widespread uh, you know snowstorm at this point here in the northeastern portion of the united states let's zoom in a little bit more here and as you can see uh, at 4 p.m uh, we're going to see heavy snow through much of western massachusetts northern portions of connecticut uh, much of upstate new york York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine is going to get pounded by some pretty moderate to heavy snow. And the temperatures are going to be crashing at the same time. So I do think that this is going to stick or a decent amount of it is. And then as that storm winds up, it really puts a lot of moisture down into Vermont, especially in the higher elevations here. We're going to see, uh, you know, this is a significant storm, one of the uh, more significant uh, uh, snow systems that we've seen so far. And then as this thing wraps up around 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, it's still putting down snow through a lot of Maine. 9 a.m. Look at this. <laughs> We're still seeing snow all the way back at 5 p.m. Uh, and that's around the time that it's going to really exit the area. And then all the, uh, you know, significant snow is going to be uh, up there in Quebec. But the full progression of the storm is actually a little bit more intense than what was forecasted a couple days ago. So I do think we're going to see some significant uh, snow totals here, some plowable snow for a lot of people. Let's take a look at those forecasted snow totals. So in the low-lying areas, I do believe that if you get under the right band of snow, you're still going to be in an area where you can receive two to four inches of snow, which is pretty significant, especially if that happens happens down here in northeastern portions of Pennsylvania, uh, but especially in the higher elevations in Vermont, New Hampshire here in extreme western uh, Massachusetts and eastern New York, uh, we definitely could see a couple areas that get over a foot of snow. So you know where you are. If you live in this area here that is prone to bigger snow totals during these kind of storms, I really do think you're going to get it. Go ahead and prepare now, uh, however that's going to affect you. Even, you know, closer to the coast up here in Maine, you could see three, four, maybe five inches of snow around the Boston area. Maybe if you get under that right uh, band of snow tonight into early tomorrow you could see an inch or two uh, so this is a really interesting setup it'll be uh, interesting to see how much snow everybody ends up with if you live in this area make sure you send me a picture uh, on twitter of what's going on and i will share it and then of course you can see over here the effect of those uh, lake enhanced and lake effect snow showers especially as they hit the mountains some higher uh, snow totals are going to be possible there uh, in the appalachian mountains in virginia 
West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Of course, right off the lakes there, there's going to be some places that see six, seven, eight inches of snow uh, just from being under the right band of snow for enough time. So the snow on the East Coast is not the only thing that's going on, okay? We've got a little clipper coming down from Canada into Minnesota, Wisconsin, and portions of Michigan around noon tomorrow. And this is also going to have some pretty quick hitting, heavy to uh, moderate snow showers as it slides off to the south and east. And or as it slides off to the south and east, it is going to combine with a little bit of moisture uh, that's locked up down here in the southern portion of the U.S. and it might actually expand a little bit and be a decent little clipper uh, quick hitting snow shower uh, for a lot of people in Michigan maybe even in extreme northeastern portions of Indiana and a lot of Ohio as well and look at that that is a very interesting little situation there as a lot of Michigan's also going to get a decent amount of snow out of this and uh, <laughs> once again it hits the Appalachian Mountains and pretty much gets ringed out those mountains do a really good job of protecting uh, this area down here in the mid-Atlantic uh, from the snow especially if it approaches from the northwest so this is a you know it's a moderate clipper nothing crazy no blizzard going on here no massive winter storm total snowfall amounts here once again two to four inches through much of Michigan uh, if you go a little bit further north here you might see a couple places that exceed four inches uh, the vast majority of everybody's going to get an inch to three inches maybe and then of course down here through much of indiana and ohio we're talking about an inch at most okay this isn't a big deal it's a quick hitting clipper it's sliding by real fast so if i zoom out here you can see there's a little bit of a pattern uh, all the snow's being held up in the northeastern portion of the united states and you can almost see just from the snow map that there is a big warm bubble here okay it's a little bit more mild in this portion of the u.s and it's colder over here and over here and that's the uh, pattern that we've been talking about if we take a look at high temperature for today you can see that ridge that little bit of uh, warmer temperatures advecting all the way up into Nebraska and South Dakota with widespread 50s and 60s and you can see the trough over here in the uh, current storm system that's bringing down that colder air uh, it's it's really not going to get out of the 30s for a lot of people over here in the uh, Great Lakes Ohio Valley and Northeast regions if we go forward low temperatures tonight are going to get pretty low if we keep going forward you can see this ridge is trying to advect as far northeast as possible it's going to warm up a lot here in the southeast we're going to stay a little bit bit warmer than average over here in the Midwest uh, but this stream of cold air from Canada is just really going to keep trying to keep that warm air at bay and that's what we're dealing with okay I do think this ridge is eventually going to try to uh, sweep through the eastern portion of the U.S. at least for a little bit as we go into the future but I think our you know cold pattern from especially in the northeast is going to be sticking around uh, for a little while all right, let's look at that medium range forecast for the whole United States. We're looking at the Euro model now. Here's the current storm that we're looking at now. That's going to skedaddle and get out of here and pretty much be out of our hair around Saturday at 7 p.m. That's when we're going to see some of that heavier snow there in Michigan and uh, Wisconsin with that clipper that's coming through. Also got a little disturbance coming into Mexico and then sliding into the Texas region into the, the deep south, bringing some rain to everybody down there. Nothing crazy, nothing severe. Uh, you can very clearly see see the ridge and the trough battle right here lots of warm air lots of cold air and as we go all the way into Tuesday uh, November 30th at 1 a.m. Uh, once again we're still dealing with the uh, the warm air locked down here the cold air locked up here really not a lot of interesting stuff happening here like I've been saying for a little bit for the most part I'm just wanting to show you the medium range forecast because uh, slowly but surely this ridge does um, come over to the north and east a little bit so we're still really cold over here in New England all right but in the mid-atlantic region in the uh, great lakes and ohio valley i do think we're going to have a brief period of warming up a lot of us could see temperatures in the 60s uh, as we go later on into the week and early into next week before we have another big pattern shift uh, so you've seen we've had a lot of little clippers come through here uh, no big storms have happened. I think the next, you know, five, six, seven days are going to be mostly uneventful. But once we finally have this warm air advecting further northeast, a lot of uh, the United States looks like we're going to have pretty favorable weather uh, on two, uh, Thursday, December 2nd. We have two things happening. First of all, we have a decent little clipper, an actual uh, storm coming through that's going to bring snow to Minnesota into uh, Michigan. Okay. Uh, and that's probably going to go off into the northeast and disrupt the warm air advection there. Uh, causing it to get cold again and, and bring more snow. Second off, we have a massive pull of cold air back here in the Pacific Northwest up into Canada. 
Okay, uh, this storm's going to set off sort of like a trigger effect and allow for that to escape down into the United States. According to this model, check this out. A giant cold front and a massive area of cold air uh, may be plunging into the central and eastern portion of the U.S. around Friday, December 3rd. This is the Euro model. I like it, especially for this time frame. Uh, but remember, anything beyond 200 hours, which what we're looking at right now is hour 204, anything beyond 200 hundred hours is a little bit wishy-washy all right it always changes but I think we should talk about this all right now let's take a look at this bad boy this is uh, about 200 hours from now starting Saturday December 4th uh, the euro model is currently showing a massive winter storm in the works uh, for a lot of people on the east coast of the US and not only that a polar vortex Arctic outbreak uh, coming down through a lot of people in the US so you're gonna hear a lot about this especially if you watch you know stuff like this often uh, people are going to hype this up. People are going to talk about this a lot. Let's talk about the facts right now, okay? The Euro currently shows a low pressure system uh, combining with a big cold front and causing uh, some possibly some storms in the southeast and a little bit of rain and snow up here uh, through the Ohio Valley into the northeast uh, around 7 a.m. on Saturday, December 4th. And then immediately uh, sparks up a new low pressure system off the coast or right on the coast of Virginia there, bringing down even more cold air all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And we have a, a massive winter storm on our hands here for the mid-Atlantic regions all the way up through the Northeast. Uh, this is a classic kind of storm uh, that we see uh, some of our most memorable storms, some of our most, uh, you know, the heaviest snow that we get, especially in the Appalachian Mountain region right in through here. This is that kind of storm, all right? According to the Euro, this has been pretty consistent. It showed up on the past two or three runs uh, with a lot of heavy rain on the front side and a lot of heavy snow on the back side and cold air. Uh, this is one of the coldest cold air signatures I've ever seen uh, for early December. But once again, we are 220 eight hours at this point it's fun to look at okay and also sometimes this stuff sticks so we're gonna watch it very closely as we go forward look at that 970 millibar a uh, low pressure system on uh, Sunday December 5th uh, we've got a, a blizzard at this point okay especially for Pennsylvania and New York let's watch this happen on the temperature anomalies there's our big ridge and our big area of warm air that I'm almost certain that this is going to happen okay uh, this is going to expand and try to you know warm everybody up here in the beginning of December it's going to feel like winter's over. It's going to feel like we don't have any chances for any snowstorms. And then this big bucket of cold air that's been spinning around up there near Alaska is going to plummet down into <laughs> the central and eastern U.S. And holy smokes, look at that. Massively decreased temperature anomalies there. Uh, this is an image that uh, if it were to come to fruition would be absolutely crazy. So that's the picture that the European model is painting. All right, now I wanna talk about the GFS model, okay? And the title of this video is The Weather Models Have Gone Nuts. And the reason I titled it that way is because the GFS model here shows something completely different. Not even, not just a little bit different, but completely different. And then a lot of the other major uh, deterministic models are also showing something completely flip flop from even this. So I've noticed that this happens mostly in the winter time where there's model madness, there's a lot of pancaking, flip flopping. Um, you really, it's hard to get a grasp on what's going to happen uh, with these weather models. And the reason I'm telling you this and the reason I'm explaining it to you is because, it, you know, if you watch any weather media out there, if you get your weather information from anywhere other than the National Weather Service, which is where you should be getting it most of the time, uh, you're going to hear a lot of stories. You're going to hear some people saying a big blizzard's coming. You're going to hear some people saying uh, that this is going to be the warmest and driest winter we've ever had. And that's because a lot of people out there just look at these models, they pick their favorite, and they just say that's what's going to happen, and they, and, they, and they go with it. That kind of works in the spring and the summer. Uh, there seems to be more consistency and, and more consensus between the models during those months. But in the winter, man, it's crazy, okay? So let's look at the GFS here. Big trough uh, right now, okay? So this is right, of course. Uh, this is what's going on right now big storm over there in the northeast and uh you know just like i've been talking about forever now we've got this massive ridge building in the west and then a constant influx of troughs uh through the northeast this is the, the gfs agrees here there is no discrepancies here this is exactly what's going to happen warmer over here colder over here bada bing bada boom and there's another area of agreement where there's a huge pocket of cold air that needs to come down it's going to be forced down into the u.s uh, at some point around the beginning of December, around that December 2nd through December 5th time frame. The Euro showed it and it ended up as a big storm over here on the East Coast. Now the GFS is showing it as well and what happens with it, it gets locked up on the West Coast 
and <laughs> and then builds a huge ridge over here on the east coast with massively warmer than normal temperatures so here we are monday december 6th the euro says uh we're all going to be freezing our butts off and buried with snow uh the gfs says uh, no, get your uh, short sleeve shirts out. And then it puts a big trough over here with a lot of stormy weather, possibly through the Midwest. So in my personal experience, uh, during times like this, we just need to wait until we get closer. I feel bad for the forecasters out there that, you know, do this for big networks and people come after them with pitchforks if they're wrong uh, because, you know, there's really not a lot you can do here. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and stay tuned because I'm going to be here updating you through every single part of it. But yeah, this is the model madness. This is the discrepancy that we have going on right now between the GFS and the Euro. So it's that time of year, okay? <laughs> Uh, some of you guys are going to get mad at me. Some of you guys are going to get really interested and really into reading the models and forecasting long term with me. If you watch the beginning of this video, you know, it's very factual down to the point. It's going to snow here at this time. It's going to do this. Uh, but, you know, towards the end of the videos, we're always going to be talking about these potential storms down the road, and the disagreements between the models. It's an important part of winter on this channel. So I'm glad you guys are here with me. And just know, uh, you know, if there is a big storm that's coming, you will be the first to know because we're the only ones talking about this stuff as in-depth as we do it here. So thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.